What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I want to show you guys how we could do motion capture cleanup inside of iClone 8. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see right now, I'm actually starting out in Character Creator 4 because I just finished up a tutorial on how we could bring in custom motion capture data from the x sand suits in the Character Creator 4. Now let's say we want to take it one step further and bring it into iClone 8 so that we can further do some motion capture cleanup. And so from here, I'm going to make sure that I have Snake Eyes selected. And so to make sure he's selected, you'll see that we have a yellow binding box right here. So that tells you that he's selected here. And then I'm going to come up to file. And then I'm going to come down here to export and then send over to iClone. So I'm just going to click send to iClone. And I already have it opened up. So it should automatically just populate them inside of iClone. But if you don't have iClone 8 opened up, it should open it up for you. And so here we are. I'm inside of iClone 8 right now. You can see I have snake eyes in here and I actually want to bring it to my animation window. So I'm going to come up here to window, come down here to workspace and then come down here to animation. And now you can see we actually have our timeline down here and we have a curves editor as well, which I'm going to actually just cancel this out because I'm just going to do some keyframing here. So if you look down here inside of our timeline, you can see we have our motion clip down here. So if I scroll this down, you can see we have gestures, motion layer and weight. So we're going to be adding keyframes down here in order to do that. I'm going to click right here on the right hand side under animation layer temp. I'm going to go to modify and then I'm going to go right here where we see like a running character. I'm going to left click on this and then I'm going to come down to where it says edit motion layer like so. And that's going to bring up this little skeleton here and you'll see it's going to correlate with our character right here. So let's say if I scroll through here and let's say I want to go into this pose right here. It looks like my wrists are kind of bent in the direction that I don't want it to be bent in. And so I could go about this one of two ways. I can actually select it right here. And then you can see that we have control of the axes right here as well. Or if I want to select it on a skeletal mesh, which is easier, I usually select it right here. And it's going to correlate it inside of our viewport. So let's say I want to do my left hand like so. So now you can see we can actually move it around if we want to. And it's going to leave a keyframe down here. But let's say I want to rotate it instead. Like I like the position, but I just want to rotate that wrist. I'm going to come right here where it says local rotate. I'm going to click on this. And then I'm just going to actually move this into position as I want it. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the thumb. So if you have any issues, I know the Mixamo skeletal system sometimes has issues with the thumbs. So this is an easy way to go in and fix that. So now if I come back into my timeline, let me actually click this off. And you can see I put a keyframe down here instead of my timeline. My wrist right now is going to be up because we only have one keyframe in here. But I'm just going to play this through for right now. And now you can see that everything's aligned how I wanted it to be in there. But let's say if I go back to my T pose and you didn't want like for whatever reason, you didn't want your first position to be like this. All you have to do is go back to edit motion layer, make sure I'm on my first frame, and then I'm just going to select this and move it back into place. So it's as easy as basically just going in and kind of keyframing the frames that you don't like. So now if I play it through, now everything's going to be set how we need it to be. So it's basically as easy as that to do some motion capture cleanup inside of iClone 8. I love being able to bring my clips now into iClone and using it as a way to do motion capture cleanup. It's super simple. And from here, we can easily export it out so we can bring it into our favorite 3D applications like Unreal Engine and Cinema 4D. So once you're happy with it, basically all I'm going to do is make sure he's selected here. So make sure he's selected. I'm going to come up to file, come down to export, and I'm just going to export out of FBX. And that's going to give us some different options depending on where you want it to send it to, whether it's Unreal, Maya, 3D Max, Cinema 4D. We have a whole plethora of different places we can send it to. And it's as easy as just hitting the export and then bringing it to your favorite application. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Super simple, easy procedure for doing motion capture cleanup inside of iClone 8. I'm really digging iClone 8 right now. It's probably one of my new favorite tools for coming in, especially with my motion capture data. It's easy to bring stuff into Character Creator like I showed in my previous tutorial. And then from there, export it out to iClone 8 to do my cleanup and then bring it over to my favorite 3D application. So if you found this helpful, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave me a big thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm. And until next time, Stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.